Department of Homeland Security just broke ground on a new facility that sounds like it should be the location for a sci-fi movie. It's called the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility, and it's due to be fully operational by 2022. And once it's fully operational, it could be very, very dangerous. You see, in 1954, the U.S. Agriculture Department established an animal disease research center on Plum Island so that they could study foot and mouth and other deadly animal diseases. They chose Plum Island because it sits off the far eastern end of Long Island, New York, in the Atlantic Ocean, where the prevailing winds blow toward the ocean. So if foot and mouth disease or any other airborne danger accidentally escaped from the lab, it would just blow over the ocean where it would cause no harm. Foot and mouth went airborne in the UK in 2001, and more than six million animals had to be slaughtered. That's about when Homeland took over the Plum Island lab, because biological threats had just gotten really real. So a remote island for the lab was a wise choice, especially as the lab also now works with zoonotic pathogens that can jump from animals to people. The last thing Homeland would need would be for one of those microbes to escape the lab on Plum Island, as it could cause a massive epidemic with catastrophic human casualties. Which is why it is so mind-boggling, scary, and dangerous that they just broke ground on the new National Bio and Agro Defense Facility. Because that facility is located on the Kansas State University campus in Manhattan, Kansas. And that facility is where Homeland is moving the Plum Island Lab. That puts it smack in the middle of cattle country, which means Millions of animals will be living right around these deadly airborne pathogens. It also puts the lab smack in the middle of tornado country. If a tornado hits it, it could easily just knock the lab over and send all those pathogens, deadly to animals and humans alike, flying across the country. The new facility will include a biosafety level four lab, which means it will deal with deadly pathogens for which no vaccines or treatments exist. Not to mention the fact that there's already controversy about what the hell the government was up to on Plum Island. Some firmly believe that's where Lyme disease was accidentally created and released. So yeah, this new lab has sci-fi written all over it. But unfortunately, this isn't just some dumb movie. Plum Island, a small island off the eastern tip of Long Island, New York, a former coast artillery post, is now the U.S. bastion against foreign animal diseases. One thing we don't want people to understand is what we do here is trying to protect the nation's livestock, which protects the food supply and our economy. We do no classified work at Plum Island. All the work that we do, we publish all of our science. Everything is very out in the open. The laboratory was built out here about over 60 years ago. We wanted to make sure when they built the lab that we we're going to have any live virus that it was not on the mainland and could not be spread. The laboratory was built out here on an island to keep it safe. Deadly diseases, terrorism threats, and top secret government research. Sounds like a best-selling novel, but it's the storyline for a real lab operated by the Department of Homeland Security. And now it's about to clear its last hurdle before coming to K-State. Here's NBC Action News investigator Ryan Kapp with more. Ryan? Elizabeth, the mystery of Plum Island is featured in books and recently highlighted on TV by Jesse Ventura. Research is so dangerous it's been banned to an offshore location. But the government wants to break new ground and move the facility facility off the island and into the Midwest. The research lab is an economic windfall for the region. Construction will cost hundreds of millions of dollars and bring high-paying federal jobs. It will be the only lab of its kind in the world, built around K-State's existing biosecurity research institute, where training and study of animal diseases already take place. I'm very excited to have it here in Kansas. But others, like retired K-State professor Tom Manny, I have strong reservations. Worry about the worst case scenario. This is Plum Island, a government research center with a controversial and mysterious past. Now operated by Homeland Security, it's the only place scientists can legally study the highly contagious foot and mouth disease. But the 50-year-old lab is aging and in need of replacement. Located just off the coast of Long Island, it's also viewed as a vulnerable target for terrorists. 
The Coast Guard is hot on the tail of Jesse Ventura as he attempts to reach Plum Island. Former Governor Jesse Ventura raised safety issues last month in his show Conspiracy Theory, questioning what really goes on inside these walls. Plum Island's checkered past includes a leak of foot and mouth disease in 1978 that was contained thanks to the island location. The risk may be small, but it isn't that small. Professor Manny and his opposition group have tried to keep the research lab from coming to the Midwest. He points to a 2001 foot and mouth outbreak in Britain that forced officials to kill 7 million sheep and cattle. And in 2007, the disease spread in the UK again, this time blamed on a sewer leak at a nearby bio lab. And if it happened here? The devastation of a, a foot and mouth disease outbreak economically for all of these people would just be total. An economic impact estimated at four billion dollars. And that's not all. Scientists will also study pathogens not even allowed at Plum Island. They're called zoonotic diseases, which can spread to people, have no known treatments, and require wearing a hazard suit just to handle. Construction on the Federal National and Bio Agro Defense Facility is behind schedule and over its initial costs by nearly $800 million. Known as NBAF, the facility in Manhattan, Kansas, will be the main research center for some nasty animal diseases. For Harvest Public Media, Laura Ziegler reports on the progress and possible roadblocks moving forward. Against the buzz of backhoes and bulldozers, a fortress of concrete and steel buildings is gradually taking shape on the Kansas State University campus. Once complete, the National Bio and Agri-Defense Facility, or NBAF, will be a top-level biocontainment laboratory. It's designed to study exotic animal diseases that are lethal to humans and wildly contagious among livestock. These germs are microscopic and often airborne. They're transmitted through contact with an infected person or as easily as a contaminated Kleenex released into a feedlot. NBAP was born out of a post-9-11 presidential directive designed to protect the U.S. food supply from an agro-terror attack. But it's been a bumpy road to this point. It didn't take long after Kansas won the project for the decision to be declared political. Then a 2010 congressionally mandated review of the lab's potential risk stunned local and scientific communities. Dr. Ronald Atlas chaired a committee evaluating risk at NBAF and spoke to reporters when the review came out. The probability of an infection resulting from a laboratory release of foot and mouth disease from the NBAF in Manhattan, Kansas, approaches 70% over 50 years of operation with a projected economic impact of nine to $50 billion. In response, Homeland Security fortified concrete walls and steel barriers. That and other extra measures drove up the price by millions, but were enough to reduce the risk of a disease release to less than 1%. The final report was controversial, but NBAF was a go. To ensure the project got finished, Kansas contributed more than $300 million. All of the one and a quarter billion dollars needed to complete the project is appropriated, but experts worry about the cost of maintaining these labs. It's astronomical. Turns out future funding won't even be Homeland Security's problem. President Trump has shifted operational authority for NBAF from Homeland Security to the Department of Agriculture once construction and certification are complete by 2022. After a fight that spanned more than a decade, Plum Island on Suffolk County will not be sold. A federal budget released last week repealed the auction of the island. Back in 2008, Congress created a federal law to mandate the sale to the highest bidder. But local lawmakers and environmentalists fought it and won. They argued to preserve it as a world-renowned research facility, historical site, and conservation area. So we talk about um, this new um, level four lab, which as you understand, has pathogens that have no cures and no vaccines and are being developed. Now here was a very good investigative piece. I've, I think I've just put part one, there's a part two, where the people of New York were being questioned if they're okay with it becoming from a level three to a level four. Level three means we're dealing only with animal diseases, right? And remember, this is an island near New York. It's like in the middle between like Boston, Connecticut, New York, right? Highly densely populated areas. But they were like, listen, man, I'm fine with the whole animal viruses, right? 
Well, when you're going to add people viruses, you can't put it near the population. You got to take it to another island, somewhere far, far away from people and animals. He's like, it's like this lab with the animals. You're not going to stick it in the middle of America with cows. They literally say that. But guess what? Some people have this fascinating idea that they're going to stick an animal bio research lab that also has human pathogens. It's a level four like Wuhan. It's crazy, right? In Kansas, in the middle of our food supply, because that sounds like a great idea. We're going to put all these animal diseases and human diseases right there in the middle of our food supply because it sounds incredible. So here's a video where it talks about stuff that happened, right? But it's very important for you to understand that there was information about Plum Island where that level three facility was at that they have concealed from the public that, that indicated the dangers and indicated the damage to soil and water. But for some reason, they're calling it an environmental freaking sanctuary. Why? Well, when this deal was made that they were going to make it a level four or move it, right? They were like, okay, we'll move it if we have money for it, right? That was the idea. If we have money for it, we're going to move it. So they're like, I know how we can have money. We're going to sell it. We're going to do a private sale. And that money will fund the moving of this facility to another location. Texas was one of them. Atlanta was another um, Kansas was another, which was, was the other one? Was it Missouri? It wasn't Missouri. What was it? Don't remember. Oh, it was the, the Plum Island itself. Sorry. So it was either to stay at Plum Island in the middle of all this population with animal diseases or take it to Atlanta where they already have a level four for human pathogens only, but now they wanted to make it a human and animal pathogens. I mean, we need to experiment on how we can create zoonic transfer diseases, right? We need to see if pigs will ever infect humans. I mean, one way of doing it is using porcine cells, but we already did that. So um, so the idea was that they're going to move it there, but they concealed information. And the reason that they concealed information is because then the people of Kansas would say no. And the question is, did you guys in Kansas actually vote for this? And if it has been voted, can you go to your legislators and tell them to take a look again and they need to shut this down? They need to stop right now. They need to shut it down and abandon, uh, abandon ship, like done. I'll tell you why. The fact that they, in the COVID-19 omnibus bill that President Trump signed in 2020, snuck in a clause disallowing the sale of Plum Island because to sell the island, someone buys it. And if someone buys it and they find toxic chemicals, three-eyed frogs, what you saying? Because that shows up in New York, right? Or deformed seals or vegetation dead or dies of radiation, then people will know that these facilities are not safe. This is why they banned the sale of it. So the thing goes is if you created this whole approach, this contract of moving Plum Island to Kansas based on the fact that you're selling Plum Island to fund it, but you're not, now you're taking it from taxpayers, which is a multi-billion dollar cost, you're in breach of contract with the people. Plum Island is a laboratory that's been here for 65 years. We have to move on and they are building a new laboratory. Uh, that laboratory is going to be in Manhattan, Kansas, and that laboratory will be able to not only work at BSL-3, which we work here, we'll be able to work at BSL-4. BSL-4 is a level where you wear spacesuits. You're working with diseases that not only kill animals, they kill people. I'm a veterinarian. I became a veterinarian because I care about people, and I care about the public, and I care about the food supply. One of the biggest threats to that is a disease like foot and mouth disease that doesn't exist in this country and hasn't been here since 1929. America needs Plum Island because what we do is make sure that foreign animal diseases, diseases that don't exist in livestock in this country are controlled. So if you have a disease like foot and mouth disease, which the last outbreak in this country was 1929, what's an animal's infected? It's infected for three years. That means you have to kill it and you have to bury it. 
What you have to understand about agriculture is you go in and kill that herd, you've just killed out all the genetic improvements of 100 years. So bringing that back is going to be very difficult. It's estimated that we had an outbreak of foot and mouth disease in this country, the impact will be over $50 billion just in the first year. It'll take us $180 billion to get our markets back and to get the economy back and the food supply back. And it could be catastrophic depending on how long it took it to get under control. $800 million, though, Laura, that's a lot of money. Well, like Brian said, they had to put a lot into it after this uh, environmental impact statement. Then there was a review by the National Academies of Science, and they said in their initial review that there was a 70% chance over the 50-year fi life of the lab that there could be a break or a release of one of these pathogens. So they went back to the drawing board, and like Brian said, they put in a lot of concrete and steel barriers. They thickened the walls. They really put in a lot of risk mitigation that they were required to do. And the second report said that the risk of a release was less than 1%. Hmm. That was a little bit controversial, that report. Some, some experts questioned the methodology of it, but it was enough to get the lab started. And a lot of people were comfortable with that. They really did put a lot into making it safer. Brian, uh, Laura just used this word leakage out of this facility. I think maybe we should give our listeners some, for instance, this could be nothing short of catastrophic in a state like Kansas, right? Yeah, I mean, it'd be a really big deal. Back in mouth disease would do, if, if it were to, to be widespread. Um, back in 2001, there was an outbreak in the United Kingdom, and it cost them, so it lasted... Uh, I think six to nine months before they were able to kind of really wrap it up. Uh, they had to kill uh, millions of cattle and it cost about 10 to $15 billion is their estimate and what it cost the economy mm. there in the United Kingdom when this happened just, just in 2001, not that long ago. So a leakage like this in a state like Kansas, you might see something similar, Brian, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, cattle outnumber Kansans two to one, pretty much. And, and so <laughs> Good for us. Yeah. If, if, if this were to spread, and again, a lot of what they're trying to study here at InBef is actually, if there were an outbreak, how can we identify it and diagnose it and stop it from spreading quickly? So it's kind of hard to guess how far it would spread, but, but if it were to spread as quickly uh, as say it did in the United Kingdom, if they didn't recognize it fast enough, then yeah, I mean, it's, we're looking at billions of dollars, not just to Kansas's economy, but to the United States economy because of all, none of this stays here in Kansas. Everything is transported somewhere else. Hmm. At the time, the bat virus, RATG13, was found in the copper mine, the most secure laboratory in China for the study and containment of viruses was the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It was, and still is, run by Shi Zhangli, who's known as the bat woman because of her work with bat diseases and who has confirmed that she did take samples of the copper mine virus to study in Wuhan. But it's the type of research that was taking place here that raises eyebrows and adds weight to the theory that COVID-19 came from this laboratory. It involved the manipulation of viruses for research, which made them incredibly dangerous. Rhina McIntyre is Professor of Global Biosecurity at the New South Wales University. She says the bat virus that infected the miners in the copper mine could have been deliberately mutated into COVID-19 through the controversial and risky research technique called gain of function engineering. The genetic engineering of a pathogen can be done in different ways. One way of doing it is called gain of function research, which is where you pass the virus through an animal host over and over again. So you're basically speeding up nature. You're like speeding up evolution by hundreds or thousands of years. That's, you know, a well-established technique. Shi Zhang Li has confirmed that she and her team conducted gain of function engineering on bat coronaviruses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Nikolai, gain of function engineering for the layman. So essentially we take a virus that we consider to be a potential threat, say a influenza virus from birds. We know that the Spanish flu that killed potentially hundreds of millions of people in 1918 came from a bird virus that crossed over to humans. 
So we have a whole lot of other bird and influenza viruses which don't cross over to humans. So the idea here is to try and create one that does. So essentially we harvest an influenza virus from current birds that isn't causing a pandemic and we now try to insert genetic features into that virus that now would enable it to cause the human pandemic. And to scientific, I mean, what's the gain? What's the good bit about that? Well, the gain is understanding the enemy. Viruses out there in the wild are our enemy. So the idea here is that by studying the enemy and even manipulating the, the enemy to see how it could be even stronger, maybe that will help us in defending ourselves against the enemy. There's some who say the risk is we now have created something that didn't exist in nature, which is a highly lethal human virus. And if that was to leak, we have devastation. This is like a really important issue in general, not just around coronavirus. I saw, saw Jason sort of shaking his head, kind of being like, was it, was it, kind, of, was it kind of like mind blowing to you that there's this research being undertaken? Yeah, I don't there think is. many people I, know about this. I, I'm just so disturbed that this goes on and I don't think it should go on because it's just so intrinsically dangerous. If we are engineering a virus that could wipe out humankind, it, it is literally like we're building the Death Star and if something goes wrong, then everybody dies. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it, I find it shocking. I think gain of function engineering, this engineering, which is horrific in your mind and mine too, that is banned, isn't it, in Western laboratories? It was outlawed in the United States. It's now been actually brought in. Interestingly, when it was banned in the United States, the research was actually moved to the Wuhan Institute of Virology because it wasn't banned in China. And so, in fact, at one point, the US government was funding the gain-of-function research that we've seen published from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But it is a fact that it is legal to undertake this research currently in pretty well most countries of the world. I was going to say, Brian, why was Manhattan, Kansas, picked for this project to begin with? Uh, that That's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> it depend, again, it kind of depends on who you ask. On, on one side, you can say, really, uh, there was a lot of political clout that helped get it here. Um, uh, and that started with Kathleen Sebelius, you know, yeah. and then Brownback picked up the picked up the baton and ran with it. Yeah, and, and I think he was senator at the time, Senator Brownback, doesn't come up as often as some of the other big names, but he, he did play a big role in getting it here. And I think it was even a surprise in the end that Kansas did end up getting it because there were some other big names and big states. Texas really wanted this facility and for it to end up in Kansas was kind of, it, it was a really big victory for, for the politicians who worked on this at the time. In fact, Kansas, end up, Kansas, Kansas ended up filing a lawsuit saying that there were some Mickey Mouse around the... Te Texas filed a lawsuit. I, I'm sorry, Texas. Yeah, yeah, Texas filed right. a lawsuit in, in, when, when, after Kansas was awarded it. Uh, senator Pat Roberts, Brian, was a key player in this, right? The, the senator who's retiring uh, in early 2021, I think. Yeah, he was. And, and, and he he's also was a big part of um, kind of this smaller sister facility that's right next to NBAF that's, that's not a federal facility. It's actually Kansas State's facility. It's called the Biosecurity Research Institute. They've named it Pat Roberts Hall, basically because he was so influential in, in one, creating the, the, the BRI, this, this research institute, and in getting NBAF to come to Kansas. And so this smaller facility at, at Kansas State was kind of this um, hey, look, look at what we can do. Let's prove ourselves and, and how well we'll be able to handle this much larger facility. Uh, how much excitement, Laura, uh, is there in Manhattan over this project coming to the city? It's under construction now. What, what do you sense from the folks there? Well, hey, Tiki, coming, coming back to this, but again, <laughs> it depends yeah. on who you ask. Yeah. I would say for the most part in general, there's a lot of excitement about it. It's coming up out of the ground, uh, this huge, massive compound. Of, if you sit in the, in the football stadium, the Bill Snyder family stadium, right. you can see this thing pretty clearly. Oh, absolutely. Clearly. It's huge. It's huge. 47 acres and you know, high tech metal, aluminum. And um, I'd say in general, there's a lot of excitement, certainly among the political and economic establishment. There's a lot of excitement. There is still a, a quiet group of people who um, don't 
talk a lot, don't have a loud voice at this point, but are concerned about living in the shadow of this lab that's going to be researching um, a lot of uh, incredibly contagious diseases to animal uh, animals and potentially, uh, well, definitely lethal to humans if they should escape and the remote chance that they should escape. And sort of a lack of, uh, a feeling that there's a lack of transparency. I mean, people just don't know as much about it as they would like to. Again, that opposition voice is, is really pretty quiet at this point. It was always kind of diffuse. It was there from the very beginning. There were people that didn't want it in Kansas, but there was such a juggernaut of support from the university, the state and national political establishment that they really feel like they never had a chance. And then it got passed and started to be built and they sort of quieted down. Now, if you go back and talk to some of those people, there's still a little bit of apprehension mm -hmm. about it. But I, I'd say in general, people are really excited about it. Kansas, for all my Kansas peeps, you guys need to shoot off emails to every single one of your state reps, House, State, Senate, right? Um, and your AG. And based on what happened at Wuhan, which was a lever for our lab, since we're sticking to that story, you guys are going to protest to not have this laboratory open up in Manhattan, Kansas. Do you understand? Everybody needs to do this. Every single American needs to send a letter and says no. Based on what happened in Wuhan, which is a level four, we cannot risk this in the beef. I don't get how, you know, secure you say it is. There are tornadoes. There are floods. There are earthquakes. There is anything we cannot risk getting into famine. Do you understand? This is why Wuhan was great. <laughs> See, there's always a reason to devastation because right now you can stop it based on that. You can protest based on that. We do not want a level four laboratory in our beef belt. Take it to Diego Garcia. Take it to some random. We have so many random rock. Why don't we just revamp Epstein's Island or maybe the submarine island that Joe Biden has? Why do we have to have it? in the middle of all our cattle have we not learned why do we not use what was intended for evil and turn it into good wuhan was intended for evil well now it's going to do some good because we can say look what happened the whole world died the whole world died we're not going to kill our cattle our sheep no kansas fellow americans this is what you have to do do you want a man-made famine do you want to say, oops, don't worry, we have this incredible burger. Nope, nope, nope. Out you go. But we invested. Out you go. It is our money that they invested. Guys, you've got to send the letters. It's got to be simple. What happened with this COVID-19 that came out of Wuhan devastated the whole planet. Let's, let's just play that fiddle. On that note, for some reason, we were under some spell and did not see that you were building a level four laboratory in the beef belt. It ceases now. Kansas, you really got to get on it, man, because this is how it happens. This is how they strangulate people. They weaponize famine. All dictators have done this. Every single one of them. Send it to your governor. Send it to your AG. Send it to your state uh, the state senators, House representatives, send, send, send. And